Hi everyone, today um, I'm going to code a little bit of uh, client-side JavaScript. Um, the goal is to extract uh, the list of my events from Google Calendar. So we're going to use um, Google's API for that uh, using a plain uh, JavaScript, what we usually call vanilla JavaScript. In order to do that, we'll follow uh, a tutorial that is proposed by Google and uh, see how it works in real time, okay? Uh, if, at, if at any point you want to ask any questions, uh, I'll keep my uh, chat window here, so feel free to drop a line and I uh, reply as soon as I can see it, okay? So, let's get started. Switching to my second screen right now, um, in order to find uh, a tutorial, something to start with, uh, I typed Google Calendar API JavaScript on Google and what I'm getting is uh, a tutorial from uh, google.com that hopefully explains how to do that. So we're gonna follow the steps, okay? Um, okay, the first step is to turn on the API. As you may know, uh, when you use uh, Google APIs, you need to uh, go through the Google console and activate the APIs you need to use, right? So I'm going to follow this link. Not sure where it leads, but we'll see. Okay, so on this interface, um, it's made to associate a Google Calendar API uh, to a project, a Google project, okay? So we, we're gonna create a new one because I don't want to reuse the one I already created. Let's say, so create a project, continue. It's giving it a default uh, name, my project. See some progress here. API activation. Okay. Let's see in the tutorial if I say anything about that. Okay. Turn on the API and go to credentials. Identifier means credentials. So that's it's gonna be the right screen. Okay. My project, you can see the name of the, the current project in the top uh, left corner. And then from here, I'm gonna keep following the tutorial, okay? Mm. Okay. Add credentials. Okay, we're gonna select OAuth. So Google Calendar here. It's going to be from a web browser in JavaScript. And we want to use the data of the user who's going to log in. Okay. So, yeah. So, just to be clear, the API that I'm activating right now is for an application. It's not tied to my calendar, but it will allow uh, the users of my applications to log in using their uh, Google account and get their list of events, okay? So, create an ID. I don't really care about that, okay? Uh, this we're gonna use localhost Yeah And I think that's all we need Just make me sh um I'm not really sure that I'm following the right thing here, but... Oh yeah, At the authorization screen. That's the, the right screen here that we're doing. Uh, email address, project name, if I'm not already set. Uh, okay. My sample Google Calendar app. So at some point, I don't want to show you the... Um, uh, the off. Let me think. Maybe I can show because it doesn't matter. I will remove it anyway later on. Okay. So this is gonna be my ID for my app. Okay. Uh, tied to my Google account, but not to my calendar again. Okay. Um, Uh, 
Okay, so I say to take notes of this uh, ID. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new uh, directory with my source code. I usually dev in my dev project here. And let's create a directory called uh, Google Car. That's boring, but that's enough for now. Okay. And because I like to use Git, I'm going to initialize a repository here. And I'm going to open that new directory in my favorite editor. Yeah, so, so far no files. Let's open a new one, command N. Um, and in that file that we're going to name uh, googlecar.js I'm gonna take this client ID and store it there that's it okay now back there I'm gonna download this just in case, but I'm not sure it's useful, but okay. That's it, so we get a way to identify, a way for users to identify to our app. So what's next? <coughs> Set up the sample, so they kind enough to provide us with a sample HTML page, so I'm gonna just copy and paste this into a file. to call it quickstarts.html and I'm pretty sure that here I'm gonna have to paste my uh, client ID here okay I copy the following code and replace the placeholder okay so basically this that's it run the samples okay so this command is made to run an HTTP server from my directory here to pretend that it's a server on the web um, I don't remember which port I selected here, so let me check. 8080. So let's, ma let's match that. It's important because when you authenticate to a Google account, uh, Google will check that it's coming from the right uh, URL and port. Okay, So we have to match exactly the port that we entered here. So now that we're done, I can probably go to this and I see my files, okay? I can open quick start and now I can authorize my personal account to see my personal calendar, okay? So Google now is uh, asking for my authorization as a user, which uh, obviously I'm gonna give and that's it. You see my following task showing up here. So it's working. So as you see, it's pretty simple to do. Let's see how the code works, okay? So we have a basic HTML page with a script tag at the top. <coughs> a function that is probably uh, used to initialize the API seeing that uh, my client ID and stuff. Then one that is called when I'm uh, logged in as a user. Uh, so basically what that does is uh, make a div, uh, some div visible if I'm connected. Or oh, invisible maybe. Oh yeah, that's the div that contains the login button. Okay that calendar API, so it's gonna call another function that we'll see next. Uh, this is 
probably the login button. So when you click on login, uh, it will start uh, the authorize uh, function with the same client ID and stuff, and call the function that we we saw uh, above. Okay, and this function is called after we login. So basically, it loads the calendar API. Uh, this is Google API. Okay. Um, and list upcoming events, it's obviously the function that's going to be called from here. So it's the callback of this function, meaning that whenever the calendar API is loaded, this function is going to be called. And um, an API call is going to be made on the API. Okay, So in that case, uh, Google API client calendar events dot list. So here it takes my first calendar meaning that I can probably select from one calendar to the other, okay? Uh, it sets the starting time to now, and yeah, some other options, number of elements and stuff like that, okay? So this is made to create the, the request, and then we execute that request against the API. And we, get, uh, we provide a callback function that will contain as a parameter the results of that call, okay? So in our case, uh, it's gonna display onto the page uh, the resulting events here. Yeah, and there you see the function that actually does the printing on the screen. It's, it's, it's quite basic uh, DOM code. So it's accessing a, um, an element by ID, and then it creates a text. It appends text inside of that uh, element. Okay. And here you see uh, the dependency. Um, this is the file that creates the uh, J, uh, the G API object that we've been using in all the functions. Okay. And it's uh, passing at the parameter that whenever uh, this dependency is loaded, is gonna um, call that function check auth that we define at the top here. Okay. And this is the contents of that page. So it's pretty simple. This is going to be um, uh, hidden by default and uh, whenever the API is ready it's going to show up. Okay. So that's it for today, I guess. Uh, if you're interested to know what else we can do with that, uh, I'll probably set up another uh, live coding session. So let me know. Uh, send me your comments or tweets. Uh, you can follow um, my next project on my Patreon page. I think that uh, the URL is somewhere on this video on the top right corner. And you can, of course, uh, reach me through uh, Twitch as well or on my Twitter uh, at Adrian Jolly. Same name as the Patreon page and uh, this tweet, the Twitch page. I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed uh, this quick uh, live coding session. Let me know and I adapt to... Uh, to what you think so that you benefit more from this. Have a great day. Bye-bye.